going to be setting up a PCR. We're going to be doing four reactions. Since we're doing four reactions, we can use a master mix. We are going to be using the little calculator they have in the Google box. So it's going to be an expand PCR, and we're actually going to be using 8% DMSO to help this run a little bit better. Um, so if you want to change the number of reactions, you just press 2, enter, and then this thing calculates it. Well, it looks like it's a little bit laggy. Uh, horrible demonstration. We'll just change it back to four. Um, so what it's supposed to do is that thing changes. Uh, and then all we really have to do is follow that recipe. So uh, I'm going to start off by adding my water. I like to add the largest volumes first. And this recipe calls for 128 microliters of water. Grab my P200, set it to 128. And you want to make sure that you're using uh, the good water, the sterilized, uh, double deionized water, because anything else will give you bad results. And I need to steal a tube. So when we're doing more than one reaction, we, we use this master mix technique which uh, I, I just mentioned, we can use that calculator. It's just going to quadruple the volume or double the volume or however many uh, reactions we want to use. We can just make them all in one tube and then allocate them out individually and it just saves a whole lot of pipetting and effort. So there goes our water. And I'm going a little bit faster, but you want to be careful to check your pipette and make sure that all the volumes look right. So the next is going to be 16 microliters of DMSO. We are using a, a formula that calls for DMSO, which is an optional uh, additive that can sometimes make a PCR reaction run a little bit better. So I ran this PCR that we're setting up right now under plus and minus DMSO, and it turns out that the plus DMSO looks a little bit better. So I'm going to grab 16 microliters. I'm actually going to check my pipette to make sure it looks good, and get my liquid in there. And then whenever I add an ingredient, I just kind of move it to the opposite side of whatever ingredients I've already used, just so I don't, you know, add something twice. Next, we're going to be adding 20 microliters of buffer to, so for the expand PCR system, uh, buffer, it's called expand buffer 2, expand high fidelity, and it has a little 2 on the top. It's really easy to get confused with NEB buffer 2, which is for digesting. Um, also has a little two on top, so we want the expand buffer two, and you can tell the difference because, well, the tubes just look a little bit different. So just be careful of being confused with that. So we're going to take 20 microliters, and all the way to the top of that pipette tip, put the liquid on in, eject the tip, and I'm taking my buffer and putting it to the opposite side of my S2 black there. And then we're going to want another 20 microliters of our DNDP. So these are going to get polymerized into our new DNA. So 20 microliters. And we have stocks that are at 2 millimolar and 10 micromolar. Always check to make sure that you're using the right concentration for the recipe. So there goes our 20 microliters. And now we're going to be adding our oligos. So our oligos define the piece of DNA that we're going to be amplifying, and we're using them at 10 millimolar. So I'm going to be using, usually if you're running a single PCR reaction, a single 50 microliter PCR reaction, you're using one microliter of each oligo. Since we're doing a master mix for four different PCR reactions, we're going to be putting four microliters of each oligo in. So just kind of, that's, I guess, the purpose of that is to be mentally checking. So if I'm doing a master mix of four, does four microliters make sense? Yes. If I was doing a master mix of, say, eight, and it told me to add in 2.5 microliters of a primer, you'd want to double check your recipe. So here's the forward primer. Close, put it to the side, and put my liquid in. And check this. And then here comes my reverse. Pull it up, make sure it looks right, looks right. Put that off to the side. Put my liquid in there. And now I've added all of my ingredients except for my polymerase, so I'm going to add that last. And I need three microliters. So I'm going to set my P20 to three microliters, grab a tip, and 
and I'm gonna just come on over to this freezer. Now, if I'm making multiple master mixes, I may actually bring the cold block, which is not in the freezer right now, over to my bench so that I could go in and out of it. But since I only need one aliphat of the enzyme, I can actually just, um, I can actually just uh, take it out of the freezer, use it, and then not have to do it. But uh, we'll see if we're running a little bit low on enzyme here, so hopefully I have enough. Hmm. Looks like I have just enough, and I always want to double check that, uh, that volume. And a little uh, trick when it comes to pipetting enzymes. Since they are both cold and have a lot of glycerol in them, when you are putting your pipette into the tube, let's see, I don't know if this close up will work. Uh, if we let's pretend this little line right there is our is our uh, the, the top of our stocks. You don't want to put your pipette tip too much farther than the uh, in because if you go all the way in like that and then the glycerol, the cold glycerol is covering, covering your tip, it's going to drop the air temperature, it's going to, the air is going to contract, it's going to suck way more enzyme up than you intended. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is that when you do get that enzyme, you want to kind of drag that tip up so that you get all the excess um, enzyme off of that tip because you may be adding way more enzyme than you actually think. So, that's so our master mix is good to go. I'm just gonna give it a little vortex, tap it down, make sure everything looks all right, and now we're gonna aliphat it out in the PCR strip. So now the PCR strip too. Oh, there we go. So I'm gonna get our PCR strip. So we're going to get our PCR strip, uh, it's going to be 8 strips, it's going to be capped, and put it onto our rack. We're going to cut it in half, we're running 4 samples, so all we need is 4. And then this is going to get saved, so that can just go right back in there. And then I'm going to open this back up. I'm going to grab my P50, which is really exciting for me. I'm going to set it to 49, so we're actually doing uh, 50 microliter reactions with that last microliter is going to be template. I'm actually going to use a little bit less. And I always put in a tiny bit less of our master mix than the recipe calls for, just because of pipetting inaccuracy. And you may run out, on the last uh, sample, you may run out of uh, master mix. You uh, try to use the full line. One, two, three, and here's four. So I've just aliphated that out into that P2 strip. Expose those, and now all I have to do is put my template in. So in order to do that, I go back to my G20, and uh, I grab my template, which in this case is uh, running a little bit low. Looks like. So I'm just going to tap that down. And so normally you're going to be using one microliter, but this is very concentrated DNA, so I'm going to use even less. And I'm going to stick my pipette in. I'm going to pull up however much DNA. And then I'm going to eject it again, so that I end up with, you can't even see that, but there's just a tiny little bit of DNA. It's probably about a tenth of a microliter. And I'm just going to put my tip in, suck up the master mix, and then re-eject it so that all that DNA gets mixed in there very well. And this is an RBS library that we're uh, PCRing up, so we don't need as much diversity as we would if we're doing some sort of a protein library. Uh, again, same thing, I'm going to pull up about a couple microliters and then eject it, and then I'm left with about a tenth of a microliter. So, and then when I'm putting it in, I suck up my master mix and then eject it up and down a couple times to try to mix it. And then if I can't eject the last little bit, what I may do is kind of flip that pipette tip on the uh, mouth of the tube. But you want to be careful with that because it's a very easy way to get contamination between samples. So we just have a little more to do. Just a little bit faster this time. Looks like I need a tiny bit more. And last one. are now ready to run, uh, but before we do that, we need to do one of the most important steps, which is labeling. 
you don't label, then you won't know what you're working with. So I'm going to grab black pen, and for our purposes, we're just going to label them one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. They can never label too well. Um, so one, two, three, four. I'm going to give it a quick flip. We're going to come over to the microfuse, which actually right over here. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of flipping it back and forth. And that's to make sure that uh, everything's very well mixed. Even though I already vortexed it, I'm going to pop it into here, which it should be balanced, but we'll just give it a very brief light spin, just enough to get the liquid down to the bottom. We're not trying to tell it or anything. And then we can put it in our thermocycler and run it. So we are going for a fragment that is about 6 kb. So in order to put it in the thermocycler, we just pop it in and close the lid, and then we tighten this until it lifts up a little bit. So you can see. It's loose, tighten. As soon as it budges a little bit, you see it lifts up. Then I press all the way down. I hit block. I'm going to go to run. It's XK55, and since I want to run a program that will amplify 6KB worth of DNA, uh, I'm going to look at the first, the prefix of this pattern, of this XK. I want a 6K. So I'm going to look for a 6K. And we can see 6K50. That means that we can amplify a piece of DNA that's 6KB long, but it's going to use a 50 degree annealing temperature. No, I want a 55 degree. Well, here's another 6K, but that uses a 45 degree. We're going to look until we find a 6K. All right, here's our 6K55. So we have uh, a program that will run a 6KB amplification and an annealing temperature of 55 degrees C. Press proceed. Uh, block A, yes. Tubes, yes. Volume, 50 microliters, heated lid, yes, that's important because it prevents uh, condensation on the top and keeps your uh, master mix, or keeps your PCR reaction um, from, from skewing if it loses too much water. And then if you just press and hold select, it will tell you how long it's going to take. This one is going to run for about 4 hours, 21 minutes. We'll be back and we'll see what it looks like.